Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. So today's video, I'm doing a very quick non-edited video. Uh, I was recently tagged in a tag video, I guess you could say, the Parents with Disabilities tag done by a young lady named Serena. Serena, thank you so much for tagging me in your video. I'll have a link to Serena's video in the description, popping out on the card right there. Definitely go check out Serena's video. She did a great job. So I am going to answer these questions. It's all about parenting with a disability. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to do uh, text to speech. Parent intentional for you. Okay, we're going to do that one again. Was becoming a parent intentional for you? All right, this is number one. So I have two children's. Children's, sorry, I'm already messing up. I have two children. The first child, my son, um, was not intentional. That was a, kind of an oopsie. The second one was, though. We, we planned on having a child with my wife. Um, what would you say is the most challenging part about being a disabled parent? Three, was there... Most challenging part about being a disabled parent? Um, for me, well, it, it kind of... It depends on the age of the child. So when my daughter was young, um, I was with my daughter full time growing up, her growing up. My son, he lived with his mom. So I saw him a couple times a week. Um, so when I was with him, uh, and but mainly with my daughter, when they were little, when they were babies, the hardest part was keeping track of them. <laughs> and uh, making sure they stayed clean. Uh, my daughter constantly, I think from age, from birth to like four years old, she always had something on her face because I just couldn't see it. Number three. Was there ever a point where you doubted you could cope due to your disability? No, not at all, not at all. Not due to the disability, due to other factors. Uh, it, parenting is overwhelming, so there's always those thoughts like, oh, can I do this, can I even do this? but not because of the disability. Were your friends and family supportive of your choice to become a parent? Yeah, I think so. So like, like I said, my first, uh, my son, you know, it was kind of a surprise. So um, they weren't, it wasn't like there was a choice. It was, it was this is the way it is, get ready for it. Um, but my, my daughter, you know, yeah, of course. My wife and I were married. We've been married for a couple of years. So it was like the nat natural progression, right? You get married, you have, you start your family. So yeah, I think everybody was supportive. Absolutely. Uh, what number are we on? Five? Yeah. Do you use any specialized equipment to make parenting tasks easier? So I, I have my magnifier that's always within reach. Um, so if I needed to fill up baby bottles, things like that. You know, I would use this to see the measurements on the sides. But other than that, no, other than, you know, whenever I would take my daughter to the park or my son to the park, I would always try to put them in brightly colored clothing so that I could keep track of them. You know, a bright yellow shirt so that I knew that that bright yellow blob running around over there, that was my kid. <laughs> so it was easier to keep track of them. Uh, but other than that, that's about it really. Six. Did child services ever get involved in your parenting journey? No, 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 no child services. What is one pro of parenting with a disability? Um, one pro of parenting with a disability, um, I don't know. I could say that you're more attentive to the child because you're, you know, you're, you're hyper aware of things. That's probably, for me, that's probably what it is. I'm more aware I think of what the kid or the kids are doing because I have to be because of my vision impairment. Um, so maybe, I guess maybe that's like the question or the answer. Do you find it easy or difficult to connect with non-disabled parents? I think I skipped one on one. What is one con of parenting with a disability? I did. Uh, one con of parenting with a disability. So I think the, well, you know, I already mentioned it. Uh, my daughter, she was she was oftentimes dirty. She had food on her, food on her clothing. Um, but we also learned that these things didn't really matter. You know, early on, it's like, 
she has some food, she has some ketchup on her shirt because dad, daddy can't see it, didn't see it. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Um, she's happy, she's healthy, she's having a great time. Those are what, that what's, that's what matters. So, but I think you could say it's a con, not being able to see that kind of stuff. Um, transportation, so I was a stay-at-home dad. My wife went back to work after um, my daughter was born. And so we were stuck, we were stuck at the house a lot. Um, we did, we are, we're fortunate that at the time we lived within walking distance to a mall. And so when she was older, we would walk up to the mall and the mall had a play area inside and we'd go do that. Uh, or if there was a park nearby, we'd walk over to the park. But other than that, that was it. We were stuck. We couldn't run to Chuck E. Cheese or, you know, run up to McDonald's and get some lunch. Um, let her play in the play area at McDonald's. Uh, we were stuck. So the transportation was probably the main thing, main problem. Okay, uh, next one. Do you find it easy or difficult to connect with non-disabled parents? I, yeah, as easy as it is for anyone, I think. I don't have any problems connecting with non-disabled parents. What are some values you've taught your children that you feel stem from your disability? Um, I, I, values I've taught my children, I think there's another question that's gonna come up a little bit later, but um, I think to be empathetic, to be empathetic and of other, of people who are different and not to judge people so quickly um, just by their appearance or something like that. You know, look a little deeper into them because or if someone's acting a little strange, there may be a reason for that. Let's, let's before we jump to conclusions and uh, judge them for the way they're acting, let's maybe try to figure out why. You know, maybe they have something going on that isn't obvious, uh, outwardly obvious, that may be causing that. So let's be a little more empathetic about that. Uh, next. Do you talk to your children about your disability? Did I miss one? What are some values you've taught you? Okay, yeah, no, I didn't. Do you talk to your children about your disability? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my kids have been fully aware of my disability their whole lives. Never tried to hide it or anything. Sorry, my dog's shaking. <laughs> Keep it down, I'm trying to record a video over here. If your children are school agent, do you find school staff to be comfortable and open-minded about your disability? Yeah, my, um, the school, anytime we had to deal with the school, I was even on the PTA at my daughter's school and everybody was, was super cool about my vision impairment and accommodating. Um, even the PTA groups that we, I would go volunteer for events and stuff, they would always try to work with me and find something that I could do um, that was you know, within my ability to do so that I was still being helpful and helping out. Um, yeah, never had any problems with that. If your children are school, sorry, have your children ever displayed embarrassment about your disability? I don't think so. Um, and I've asked my daughter this. I've asked my son this. I, and if you if you're interested, I've got several videos with my daughter, and I've got one with my son talking about growing up with a visually impaired parent. You can find those on my channel. My daughter's name is Skylar. My son's name is Jacob with a K. Um, and then I've done videos with my wife talking about raising children with a blind spouse um, and about having children. That, another question coming up about that. But um, I don't know. They say they've never been embarrassed about my vision impairment. But at the same time, I don't see how they couldn't. You know, there's, there's when your kids... The, the one thing you don't want to do is stand out and be different, uh, most children anyways. And if you have a, a parent that's walking around with a cane or using a, or using a magnifier to look at their phone super close, that's going to stand out. You know, it, we don't want it to, we don't want it to be negative, but people are going to stare. That's just the way society is. So at some point, I'm sure they were embarrassed. I don't think they would admit it, you know, for fear of hurting my feelings, but I, I can't imagine that they weren't. Most of the time, though, they don't care. They've, this is their normal. They've lived with it their whole lives, so it's not out of the ordinary for them. So they, it doesn't, um, I don't think it embarrasses them that often, if it does at all. Do 
Depending on your children's ages, what stage of development presented the least number of disability-related challenges? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> some of these questions are hard. You need a, like a college degree. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Can I just skip it? That's my skip. I'm going to skip one at least. Uh, depending on, okay, this one, 15. Were you ever frightened by the prospect of your child inheriting your disability? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, my vision impairment, Stargardt's disease, is an inherited retinal disease. So there is a chance. Um, and there's always that concern. Not frightened. There's concern, of course, as a parent, you don't want. Um, you know, I grew up with it. I know how hard it is. I don't want that for my children. But at the same time, if it is to happen, knock on wood, <laughs> if it were to happen, uh, at least they have a parent that's gone through it and can help guide them along that journey. Um, so I don't have any fears for what, if it were to happen, I wouldn't have any fears for what their life would hold, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Lost my place, hang on, hold on, sorry. Uh, 16. Are there aspects of parenting with a disability you feel would be less fulfilling without one? Aspects of parenting with a disability that you feel would be less fulfilling. All right, I'm skipping that one too. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Serena, I'm skipping some of these. Um, just for time also. Do you encourage your child to assist you with tasks your disability renders more challenging? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's the whole reason we have kids, right? Is to help us um, and cut the grass and, and do the dishes and the laundry and stuff, right? Child labor. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but as I said, that's always been their normal. So helping daddy read the menu or read the board at the, at the fast food place, the menu board, um, or, you know, hey, what does this say? And they read it for me. It's, that's all normal. So yeah, they're, they're fine to do it. That's what they've always been doing, done, uh, always done. As, as soon as they were old enough to read, they've been reading stuff for me. Um, so it's perfectly normal. And I don't, it also, once again, goes back to teaching them responsibility, empathy, uh, you know, helping person, helping people. Um, 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 I think I'm on 18. In what ways, yeah. if any, does your child interact with you differently due to your disability? If what, uh, I mean, just normal things, you know, they, um, my daughter, even, uh, even when she was a little girl, I mean, even still today, um, she's 16 now, if we are going from leaving a, a store and we're walking through the parking lot, sometimes she'll grab my hand because she needs to make sure daddy's okay. He can't see the cars coming. So she takes care of me that way. Um, so there's lots of different things that they do uh, differently because of that. In what ways, if any? Sorry, wrong one. What lessons have you learned through parenting with a disability? Um, lessons I've learned. The main one is not to sweat the small stuff. Like I said before, you know, if, if your kid's going to have food on their face because, because you can't see, you didn't get it clean enough, even though you think you cleaned their whole face, you missed something, it's not a big deal. Um, my daughter, <laughs> I keep talking about my daughter. My daughter was a very, uh, a child that spit up a lot. And so she would constant and drool. She would constantly have a wet, wet face when she was a baby and a toddler. And we have cats. So there'd be cat hair stuck to her face sometimes. And my wife would come home and we realized, you know, she realized very quickly that it doesn't matter because my daughter was happy. She was healthy. Uh, she got, you know, some great time spent with daddy. Daddy took care of her. Daddy fed her. Daddy changed the diapers, daddy did everything he was supposed to do. So these little things like, you know, ketchup on the shirt, it just doesn't matter. Um, it's the big things that matter. And 20. What advice would you offer a disabled individual who is considering becoming a parent? Advice I would give, um, you know, if, if we're talking, there's, there's lots of reasons why maybe you should or should not be a parent. But if we're just talking about your disability, whether it's vision, whatever. Um, 
you know yourself. You know what you can do. You know your limits and your abilities and all of that. So if you think you can do it, go for it. Um, I think Serena even talked about this where nobody knows what to do when they first become a parent. Everybody is scared to death. Nobody has it all figured out. We're all just trying, we're all just making it up as we go. <laughs> so just because I can't see as well as the next person doesn't change anything. I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm still gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna figure it out the way that I need to because of my vision impairment. So I shouldn't let the fact that I can't see very well stop me from doing this, doing, you know, if, if, if having children is something I wanna do, and it, then I should do it or if some, having children is something you want to do, I say go for it. At the same time, it's a very personal decision. I have friends who decided not to have children because they didn't want to pass on their disability. And that's totally understandable. And that's totally a, a decision each of us has to make if that's, a, if that's a possibility. It was a possibility for me, but um, my wife and I decided that it didn't matter. We still wanted children, we wanted a family. So that was more important than, the, than a what if kind of scenario. So yeah, so I say go for it. Have lots of babies. <laughs> All right guys, so that is this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The tag, parents uh, with disabilities tag. I wanna make sure I say it right. Parenting with disability tag. Um, if you would like to do this tag, by all means, go for it. I'm not going to tag anybody just because I, you know, I, I know a couple parents who are on YouTube, uh, but I don't know a ton. So I know a lot of people who don't have kids. Um, so I'm just going to say, put it out there. If you would like to do this tag, go for it and uh, post it. Hashtag parenting with disability. Yeah. Um, and huge thank what huge thank you once again to Serena for tagging me in this video and her video to do this tag. I really appreciate it, and um, she did a great job. Once again, I'll have a link to her video down below. But that's it, guys. Hopefully, I can get this without any editing. I apologize for if I stammered on and, and, and went on too long like I'm doing right now. I should just end the video because I'm just dragging it out at this point. Um, I love your face. I will talk to you guys soon. All right, bye-bye.